Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days for today's second video, uh, which could take us around the 20th of uh, the month. So um, we're talking about getting towards Easter with the 10-day time frame, and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the uh, extended GFS and also ECM ensembles. They, they run to around a couple of weeks. Uh, and we'll have a look at the CFSB2 for the next uh, month as well. Talking of Easter, just say that uh, Easter updates have started at Gazza. Well, we did the second Easter update last night. Quite an interesting uh, one, that one. Uh, and there'll be a third update coming up for you tomorrow evening. The third Easter update will be with you um, tomorrow. Uh, now, we're starting off the video, though, at uh, metcheck.co.uk weather instrumentation. We link to metcheck.co.uk where the instrumentation of a links page at Gazwell is, and I'll drop the link into the description at YouTube as well. reason we're linking to this is that we're teaming up with uh, metcheck.co.uk uh, for a giveaway, for a spring giveaway that's going to be starting on Sunday, and we'll be running that for a week. Uh, we'll be giving a prize away. Uh, via a prize draw on Easter Sunday. Going to be much more about that in the days ahead. I'll be telling you what the prize is that we're giving uh, away in the days ahead and how you can enter the competition. But watch this space uh, for the fifth year running. Gazweb is, is teaming up with metcheck.co.uk weather instrumentation and we are going to be giving away a prize for Easter. So more on that in the days ahead. Very exciting times. Right, going to start off the video, though, by having a look at the uh, stratosphere. So this is how temperatures are currently looking at 10 HPA over the uh, North Pole. This is from the JMA. So the grey line here is the trend line for uh, this time of the year. The black line shows how temperatures have performed going right way back to uh, last autumn. There's the sudden stratospheric warming that we had around Christmas and New Year. That was really the main talking point of the winter, that sudden stratospheric warming and uh, discussing what effects we would get from that. After the sudden stratospheric warming, temperatures went very cold at 10 HPA, which is a top level of the atmosphere in the stratosphere, or one of the top levels of the atmosphere in the stratosphere. Very cold temperatures, down to minus 80 through February and into March. Since that point, as we've gone from the middle of March into April, we have seen temperatures picking up. So uh, we are returning closer to average. In fact, that's where we are right now. The temperature is around minus 50 degrees at 10 HPA over the North Pole. Where we should be at this point of the year is somewhere between around uh, minus 50 and minus 40. So let's say somewhere around minus 45. So it's still a little bit below average. It's still a little bit colder than average. Uh, but uh, that has come up quite a bit over the past week or two. And uh, it does look as though the end of the polar vortex is nigh. It looks as though temperatures will be returning to where you'd expect them to be. Uh, very shortly at 10 HPA, and uh, that will uh, spell the death knell of the polar vortex for this season. It'll come back in uh, around August, September, of course. Going a bit lower down to 30 HPA, uh, you can see where we are right now is uh, just there. So um, still quite a bit cold on average, actually, at 30 HPA. This is closer to the troposphere, of course. Uh, temperatures are still waiting to uh, recover there from the very cold temperatures that we have from February and into uh, March. Of course, back the sun, the stratospheric warming just there at uh, 30 HPA back around Christmas and New Year. So at the moment, we're somewhere close around minus 6. Uh, a little bit colder than minus uh, 60. Um, but uh, we are lifting that black line up, although it is still quite substantially uh, below average, actually, at 30 HPA. So 10 HPA, we're getting very close to average now. 30 HPA, we're still colder than average. Let's have a look and see what the GFS is forecasting to happen at 10 HPA over the uh, next couple of weeks. This is from metrozeal.fr, of course. So we've got these blue colours. Those are the cold temperatures that we still have at uh, 10 at uh, 10 um, 
HBA. So uh, you can see we are around minus 50, something like that, uh, over the North Pole itself. Let's see what happens over the uh, next week. So very little change. Keeping that temperature hovering around minus 50 as we go up to around the 18th of April. Let's see then what goes on into the more extended range. So uh, we get a Warming up a stratosphere begin to take place there on the 21st. Look at that. The orange and yellow colours are infiltrating from Siberia into the North Pole. That is the final end. That will be, if it happens, the final end of the polar vortex for this season. That will be the final warming of the stratosphere. And that will bring to an end the polar vortex of the winter 2018-19 season. So within the GFS time frame now, we do have the final end of the polar vortex and uh, the cold temperatures at 10 HPA within the time frame of uh, the GFS. It's been a very long time coming. This is much delayed on um, when you would normally expect final end to take place but it looks like it's on the way before the end of April. This is weatheriscool.com. This is showing uh, various things, but primarily what we want to be focusing on is uh, the uh, strength of the um, zonal winds uh, at 10 HPA. So uh, there are lots of different coloured lines here. I haven't got time to go through all of them uh, for this video. But this blue line just here, that is how the zonal winds have been performing through uh, this season. The black line just there is like the trend, uh, is the trend for um, this time of the year. So you can see that the zonal winds should be weakening at this time of the year, of course, as the uh, temperature warms at 10 HPA and the polar vortex weakens, so, so too should the zonal winds uh, weaken over the North Pole. You see the zonal winds went into reverse uh, just there around the new year. That's when we have been sudden stratospheric warming. After that, though, the zonal winds powered up through January and February, reaching almost a record-breaking level with the strength of the zonal winds as we went into uh, March. That's where we are right now. And still much stronger than average uh, zonal winds. So at the moment, the zonal winds should be around there. Uh, very close to going into reversal, as we should be seeing the final end of the polar vortex by now. We're actually much stronger than average with the zonal winds. But the green lines... They are the GFS uh, ensembles, so the thicker green line, that's like the GFS operational run. And then the other green lines, uh, they are the GFS ensemble members. You can see that from where we are right now, the GFS and its ensemble is forecasting the zonal winds to go into reverse. That's zero just there, of course. So uh, that's the zonal winds going into reverse as we go into the final week to 10 days of April. Before the end of April, we should see a reversal of the zonal winds. That would happen as the temperature warms up at 10 HPA, get that final warming of the stratosphere at 10 HPA, and uh, that is the death knell, spells death knell, for the uh, polar vortex. So after a very, very delayed um, end to the polar vortex, the most cold temperatures at 10 HPA and the uh, very strong zonal winds, it looks like we're getting back to what where we should be really by the end of April, which is the end of the polar vortex for this season and also uh, the reversal of the zonal winds. So things are getting back on track basically after being quite abnormal through uh, February and particularly through March. Right, let's have a look at weather then. And these are the uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average for London. That's where we are right now. A little bit milder than average still today, but those temperatures are on the slide. It feels a bit cool already, I must say, in that northeast wind. And a definite cold snap coming up at the end of week and into weekend. We've released a five-day forecast earlier on today, and we are in for some very, very chilly nights indeed over next few nights. So do cover up your uh, delicate uh, plants and uh, flowers and fruit blossom is going to be at risk, I think, over the next few nights of some unusually severe frosts, really, for the middle of April. We could be talking about temperature going down to minus 5 
or minus six by night over the weekend. So unusually cold temperatures coming up over the weekend. But next week, it looks like the temperatures are staging a recovery. So head up towards Easter and beyond, which is that period just there, looks like temperatures are recovering, lifting back up above the 30-year upper air temperature average. So once the cold weather's out of the way over the weekend, uh, we should see a recovery in the temperature taking place through to next week if the GFS is correct lots of dry weather coming up as well over the next week by the way plenty of dry weather up towards Easter but a little bit more showery over Easter but you have to say that's a fairly dry ensemble chart again uh, for April temperature anomalies from the 10th to the 18th of April are coming out colder than average not just for the UK but through most parts of Europe so this is a colder than average week uh, coming up and that's most notably at night I think where we will have some unusually cold nights at the end of the week and into the weekend. At the same time, precipitation anomalies from the 10th to the 18th of April, drier than average. So cold and dry sums it up in the next week. This is how the uh, GFS operational run is looking for Saturday, pulling in these cold east or northeast wind. This will cover by the five day forecast, of course. Those cold eases continue into Sunday and through the early part of next week as well. But by Tuesday next week, although the high pressure is still in there over Scandinavia, we're cutting off the sort of east northeasterly flow and we're turning uh, east southeast. So we start to bring up milder air from uh, central and southern parts of uh, Europe as we cut off that northerly supply. So temperature should start to stage a recovery through the early part. Of next week, heading into the middle of next week, uh, still that high pressure up to our northeast, low pressures out to the south and west. That could be threatening showers at times in the south and west, but fair amount of dry weather I would have thought in the north and east. The main thing is that temperatures are lifting up. So I suspect by this point, this is Maundy Thursday, 18th of April, I suspect by this point we're seeing the temperatures going into the mid Celsius, given a bit of sunshine. That's good Friday. Low pressure is threatening rain to the south, uh, but again, we're in a relatively mild air mass. And then into uh, the Easter weekend itself, we find high pressure on this particular GFS run anyway, becoming more influential. So this is Easter Sunday, 21st of April, under a ridge of high pressure, shipping a lot of dry and quite warm weather. Uh, with it totally different to what last night's Easter update was showing, uh, by the way. And then that's Easter Monday, where the system moving in from the northwest. That could bring some showery rain up to the northwest of the country. But down in the south and southeast, there should be a fair amount of dry and quite warm weather. In the more extended range, it turns rather cool and showery uh, again. So this takes up to the very end of the GFS run uh, today, which is Friday, 26th of April. High pressure's out to our west. We're pulling in pretty cold winds to the north, and there could be some showers coming through that as well. GFS parallel run. Again, we've got those east northeast winds on Saturday, making for a cold uh, feel over the weekend. Cut off those east to northeast winds through the early part of next week. Start to draw the air up from more sort of central southern parts of Europe. A bit showery in the south and southwest with these shallow troughs of low pressure. Uh, overall, a fair amount of dry weather, though, I would have thought, through, uh, through most parts of the country. And again, the main thing is that temperatures are recovering after what will be a cold weekend. Uh, heading up towards Easter. So, again, we have this ridge building through the country over the Easter period. Low pressure is all the way close to the south, though, could be some showery rain. Uh, through to there and then let's go through from Easter Sunday to Easter Monday we have to start, actually start to pull down some colder winds from the north northwest again so that is Easter Monday 22nd of April just bring some slightly colder air back in uh, from the north and turning things rather showery once again beyond Easter this is as far as we can go and it is as far as we can go with the GFS parallel run it's Wednesday the 24th of April and we've got a cold northerly wind coming back then uh, so you have to question about whether this is actually going to be our first cold of an average month for uh, quite some time it could be it could be our first cold of an average month for quite some time but it is early days uh, on that that's how we finish up with the GFS parallel run and uh, <coughs> excuse me we are looking rather cool and rather showery there on Friday the 26th of April. ECM run has uh, high pressure again over Scandinavia on Saturday bringing these cold east or northeast winds they continue into the early part of next week before the winds shift round to the southeasterly direction and starts to bring milder air eventually potentially warmer air 
up from the south. Uh, that's how we look as we go to the end of next week. So winds are south easterly. Should be lifting temperatures into mid teens Celsius given a bit of sunshine. Although there is low pressure down to our south and southwest. That could produce some showery bursts at times. That's how we look at day 10, which is uh, Saturday the 20th of April. Got a shallow uh, trough of low pressure over the uh, top of the UK, so that could be bringing a few showers. But overall pressure is still relatively high as we're going into the eastern period, so I don't think it will be overly unsettled. These are the scenarios that are on the table within the ECM ensembles. So at day 10, uh, which is uh, 19th of April, we've got 51 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure up to our northeast. And we're bringing up those southerly south, uh, east south easty winds. There's some sort of shallow trough to our south as well that could be providing the energy for some showery uh, conditions. At, in two weeks' time, which is beyond Easter, taking us to the 24th of April, um, this is how we are looking. So we have 30 members of the East Ensembles with high pressure over top of the UK. Obviously, they're a dry, settled, and potentially quite warm scenario. But then there's 21 members of the ECM Ensembles that have low pressure almost over top of the country so it really is a, almost a 50-50 split not quite 50-50 but uh, getting on for uh, sort of 40-60 split actually between high pressure being in control in two weeks time or low pressure being in control in two weeks time no middle ground there so I'm going to be high or low if that is correct finally let's just have a look at CFS V2 before we go these are 500 bit of our heights break it down into weekly periods. The first week period will take us from the 10th to the 16th of April. The coming week has an area of above average height sitting to our north and northeast with below average heights in the middle of the Atlantic. <coughs> Excuse me. Once again, the jet stream and the flow is doing something like that. So we're bringing in east to northeast winds, but we are close to an area of high pressure. So there should be quite a lot of dry weather on offer, albeit it could be quite chilly. Going through to week two, this is how we're looking. This is the 17th to the 23rd of April with above average heights again to our northeast, but also extending down to our south. Low pressure is in the middle of the Atlantic. And uh, that's how the flow and the jet stream is going. So a lot of dry weather and probably warmer as well in this week. We're bringing the wind up more from a southerly direction. So uh, that should be a slightly warmer week there in week two. Week three is the 24th to the 30th of April. Above average heights are over Scandinavia. Below average heights to the south of Greenland. Flow and the jet goes something uh, rather like that. So a fair amount of dry weather on offer. Potentially quite warm as well, I would have thought. Temperatures coming up from a southerly direction. And then we go through to week four, which is the first of us, the first through to the 7th of May. Again, the high pressure is over Scandinavia, and we're bringing up those east to south easterly winds, or south to south easterly winds. You'll remember yesterday, the CFS V2 was looking rather chilly for the end of April and into May. It was suggesting something rather colder. And I said that was uh, something very different to what we'd seen before within the CFS. So I was a bit dubious about it. Looks like it was right to be dubious about it because today we've reverted back to sort of a drier, warmer pattern, which is much more typical of what the CFS has been showing uh, just lately. So it looks as though that colder CFS run yesterday was actually a bit of an outlier run, but uh, we shall see. We'll check out the Beijing Climate Centre, I think, uh, tomorrow. Finally, if you're enjoying the uh, videos and the content at Gazza, please can, you, please can you consider becoming a patron uh, for Gazza. We've got 61 patrons so far. Hello and a big thank you to all of our patrons. So if you'd like to become a patron for Gazza, please can give us a, a one-off, um, give us an ongoing donation from anything from $1 a month upwards. You just come to the uh, Gazza with his Patreon page, sign up for a Patreon account, and uh, that's how you become a patron for Gazza. So alternatively, you can uh, give a one-off donation through PayPal. And if you'd rather do that, then you just come to the uh, Gazza with his PayPal page, sign in your PayPal account I and mean, then send a one-off donation for you to Gazwevids. Whether you become a uh, patron or a donor for Gazwevids, you will get a mention in the videos. We'll give you a shout out and say thank you very much for doing that as long as you want one. Uh, and of course, 
and you'd rather stay anonymous, that's absolutely fine. Just let us know with your donation. And if you would like to have a mention for your website or for your business, that is absolutely fine as well. It's however you want mention. Uh, we're happy to do it. Just leave a little note with uh, your donation or when you become a patron. And you're helping us to pay for our content and keep the videos online via Gazwa Visible website. We're primarily ads funded and uh, will be uh, remaining. So there's no question of going behind paywalls or anything like that. I uh, want to keep content completely free as everybody wants it and needs it. Uh, it's just an extra revenue stream to go along with the uh, ads. Ad yields are dropping year on year for various reasons, primarily ad blockers. Uh, and there are other reasons uh, as well. At the same time, expenditure on the website is increasing. We have to pay for, um, for example, the GDPR solution that we've been forced to implement uh, over the past year. So the upshot is we need extra revenue and uh, we ask uh, if you can give us a donation through PayPal or become a patron, then please can you do so. Big thank you to all of the patrons. Big thank you to all of donors for Gazoids. Right, that's it for today's uh, videos. Tomorrow we'll have another look at the weather for next week, 10 days. And I think tomorrow in that one, we're going to include the Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days as well. That will take us well on into May. So that's going to be quite an interesting watch, I would have thought. Right, so that's all for now, though. And thanks for watching.